yeah um what i will bring in this evening it's a it's a short um part of the essay which is published in that book and because of the time i have to bring only some motives of that the twofold foundation stone is the first um uh, yeah chapter perhaps one can say in two commemorative addresses in 1914 and 16 looking back at the laying of the foundation stone in 1913 Rudolf Steiner speaks of a second foundation stone that is still to come when certain requirements will be fulfilled, will have been fulfilled. This fact surprised and touched me, and thus I began to concern myself more closely with both foundation stone events. The physical laying of the foundation stone of 1913 and the spiritual one of 1923 and discovered that both form an inseparable whole. In the opening lecture of the Christmas conference, Rudolf Steiner in 1923, Rudolf Steiner speaks about how what was built in the spirit in the 20 years of the existence of the anthroposophical movement may now come to a manifestation. The seed what unfolded at the Christmas conference was already planted in 1902 and consisted to begin with of building in the spirit especially building on the inner nature of the human being. Cultivation of the inner life was, however, not an end in itself, but had the goal of transformation, the whole of culture. Out of spirituality inspired inner life, new forms where the where to be created in social life, science and practical life, as well as in as, as well as in artistic creation, all the way to architecture. The building impulse, inspired by the building impulses that came to realize realization in various branch buildings. Um, after 1907, Mita Waller, a close friend of Rudolf Steiner and Marie, St Marie von Sievers, asked in the context of the performances of the mystery dramas that Rudolf Steiner wrote down and staged beginning in 1910 about a suitable space for the dramas and thereby about a building for the mystery dramas. Yet the question about a building for the mystery dramas was not limited just to the matter of building a theater. For in the same time period, the idea also arose of erecting a school of spiritual science in which the academic knowledge of the time could be fructified and further developed by spiritual science. From, from the beginning, both questions were directly connected with the com community of members. Since among the members were capable representatives of many specialized fields who were able to take up this task. In summary, one can thus say that the point of departure for the building was in the interface of three areas, a suitable space for the mystery drama performances, a school in which the academic knowledge of the day could be further developed by means of spiritual science, and a place where also the inner aspect of schooling as was cultivated in the esoteric school could find its place.
Laying of the Foundation Stone, 1913. On September 20, 1913, the laying of the foundation stone took place on the evening of a stormy and thunderous day. Already a few days before Rudolf Steiner had chosen the place where the foundation stone was to be laid. Wilhelm Struck reports. About 70 meters away from us, Rudolf Steiner then walked in an arc forwards, sideways and again backwards, whereby I frequently directed his gaze up to the stars. He also often stretched out his walking cane to the stars. Then, looking almost continuously at the stars, Rudolf Steiner touched the earth with his cane in a small circle, briefly stood still and suddenly thrust the cane into the earth, round and called out, this is the place. The laying of the foundation stone was to take place during a particular stellar constellation when as an evening star, Mercury was in the constellation of Libra. Approximately 70 people participated in the laying of the foundation stone and the deed of consecra consecration in the pit that had been dug out. Nine steps led down into the pit. They took three days um, to, um, to work on that um, uh, hole in the, in the earth. Rudolf Steiner held two addresses in the course of the evening. One took place in the pit itself and the other near it. The first address for the consecration deed in the pit shows many related motives, or one could also say seeds, that are then further elaborated in the later foundation stone meditation in 1923. The second address was dedicated prim primarily to the mission of the building, which Rudolf Steiner placed into an immense context of human history by the macrocosmic Lord prayer being brought for the first time ever. Certainly both belong closely together and also already allow a view towards the Christmas conference of 1923 to light up. In what follows, I give a succinct sketch of the consecration act that took place during the laying of the foundation stone, so that one can some degree picture what took place. The central leading thought that relates to the both the first as well as the second laying of the foundation stone is the building of a living connection between the earthly and the spiritual, which is, as it were, the core thought of Rosicrucianism. At the beginning of this act, Rudolf Steiner turns to all four directions and calls the nine angelic hierarchies individually by name as beings that protect and that guide the act. He, the human soul is now to be consecrated in this solemn festive act. Now I quote Rudolf Steiner, we call you the nine angelic hierarchies are meant down upon the human soul that we want to consecrate in so far as it is possible for us to do so. We turn toward this human soul that we wish to consecrate to the work that according to our best knowledge of the times is to serve the soul. Here one can already sit up and take notice 
for that which is to be consecrated the foundation stone in the form of a double pentagon dodecahedron that was soldered together from the differently sized pentagon to the dodecahedrons crafted from copper is here addressed as human soul. In each of the two hollow platonic solids, a pyrit stone was hung on a string. Pyrit is a remarkable, a remarkable stone as it consists of the trinity of gold, sulfur and iron. It was placed on, into the earth with the smaller shape toward the west and the larger one toward the east, exactly counter to the size of the two parts of the building. As become clear in the form of the address human soul in the foundation stone verse, it has not only the function of serving as the foundation stone for a building, but was at the same time an image for the human soul <clears throat> whose development and destiny were connected with the task of the building. Quotation from Uda Steiner, we have formed this stone as an image of the human soul that consecrates itself to our great work. And its double twelvefoldness, it is for us an image of the striving human soul that, as a microcosm, is placed into the macrocosm. Anthropos, the human being, as it is as it issues from the beings of the divine spiritual hierarchies. One can see in Ruder Steiner's wording that something quite enormous and encompassing was intended with the foundation stone. He refers to the pentagon dodecahedron's two times twelve surfaces that form the foundation stone. Thus, one can think of this as the entire zodiac and the forming of the human being out of the cosmos as a kind of cosmic resonance body formed from two different sized platonic solids that are merged together. This foundation stone is at the same time a picture of the human being as the microcosm placed into the macrocosm, the human being formed and created by the hierarchies. One might be surprised that at the beginning of the addresses it is mentioned twice that the human soul is to be consecrated, and this is about the foundation stone for a building. Yet it becomes clear from Rudolf Steiner's remarks that the human being and the building are to be grasped as a, uni as a unity. One's gaze it's, is directed to the eternal of the human being that has been created by the hierarchies, the anthropos that every person is striving to become. One can call to mind the rose window in the south of the main hall in the Goethe Arnhem building, which has the words, and the building becomes man. A document was inserted into the copper foundation stone with the following words written on the white parchment from the skin of a male calf. <clears throat> At the top, we read the initials JN, which stand for Jesus from Jesus of Nazareth. This names the patron for the protector. This names the patron, the protector of the building. In this connection, we draw the connection to the macrocosmic Lord's Prayer that is conveyed for the first time in the second address. A still deeper dimension is concealed relating to the task of the building. A dimension 
that will still be spoken about. To the left and right of the two letters, three wave-like forms are to be found, which build a kind of chalice. At each of their upper ends, the names of the nine hierarchies are abbreviated. G N Jesus of Nazareth, names of the hierarchy in three larynx-like forms. In the middle dip, the double dodecahedron with the initials of the Rosicrucian words. As cornerstone of our will that seeks itself in the spirit, being that feels itself in the world's soul. Human being that senses itself in the world, I. The lower into the densified realm of the elements, this image of the strength towards, toward which we endeavor to strive through. Three, five, seven, twelve. Laid by the Johannes Building Association for the Anthroposophical Work on the 20th day of September 18. 80 after the mystery of Golgatha, that is 1913 after Christ's birth, when Mercury as the evening star stood in Libra. That was um, written on that um, um, a document, which was uh, put it in, in the foundation stone. The document was signed by 14 people. The double pentagon dodecahedron was given the initials of the Rosicrucian words in Latin. The first two lines were on the large dodecahedron, the last line on the second, smaller one. In the address, Rudolf Steiner des designated the Rosicrucian words as the meaning of our striving. After the document was inserted into the double dodecahedron and the foundation stone soldered together, now the small dodecahedron was given three, five, and seven hammer strokes by Rudolf Steiner, and the large dodecahedron was given twelve hammer strokes. Rudolf Steiner explains that the foundation stone thereby went from being an image to become a sign. The foundation stone is then placed by four men into a base poured of concrete and positioned so that the small dodecahedron is in the west and the large one in the east, exactly contrary to the size of the building's cupolas to be constructed later. The step from an image by which a physical sensory appearance takes on a certain meaning to a sign consists of somewhat letting go of the former meaning. One could also understand this as when something appears as letters. The sensory appearance has now become an expression of the cosmic world and thus can be read. The soul can learn to understand the cosmic world in its meaning within the cosmic context. With the strikes of the hammer, this step is brought about by means of a physical action that is also perceived acoustically. One can bring this sequence in terms of its qualities into connection with the three higher stages of knowledge so that the image is seen as the imaginative stage, the sign as the stage of inspiration and the enshrouding and sheeting as the last, the intuitive stage in which a unity of being is achieved. This last steps appears 
this last step appears to be the decisive one in that is already points to the foundation stone meditation of 1923 and the mantras of the school of following the Christmas conference. The addresses of 1914 and 16 also show this, which already contain fine indications of what then came later. It is notable that the theme of ensheeting comes twice, one in that the image of the human soul, the physical foundation stone, is lowered into the ground and convert with earth. And the other, and this points toward the foundation stone of 1923, in that the human soul, by means of its spiritual activity in meditative practice, with the help of the hierarchies and the trinity, creates for itself a new spiritual sheath. Practicing in this way, the soul builds a spirit self that leads to a new spirit body form in collaboration with the hierarchies. The possibility of carrying out this development is intimately connected with the being of the Christ. Laying the soul into the grave. It's impressive how Rudolf Steiner in the second address calls on those present to connect with the striving at the turning point of time. Looking at the immense sacrifice of Christ on Golgatha is the inner backdrop before which, which the building will be erected. One can already have the statue of the representative of man before one's inner gaze. The symbolic image of laying the soul into the grave which takes place with the lay laying of the foundation stone can be understood as following to the path that Christ took. This consists of making oneself ready for humanity's task that is connected with the building and to co collaborate in this task. That does mean having the readiness for the raw self-knowledge and self-transformations. As a landmark of the spiritual life of modern times, the building was to represent a reply to humanity's yearning cry of the spirit, so Rudolf Steiner. Rudolf Steiner spends a broad arc in his considerations from the ancient mystery and the culture shaping task for the laying of the foundation stone in 1913 and indicates how in the last ancient mysteries the human being still lived in direct con connection with the spiritual divine powers and cultivated, cultivated this connection in the mysteries. Culture was thus directed and formed out of the inspirations that the initiates received at the sacred, sacred sites. The decline of the mysteries and the human beings increasingly being placed on his own feet brought a stronger and stronger stronger orientation to this world and ulti ultimately a hardening of the human body, body. In order that the spiritual could even still manifest in earthly bodies, Christ brought the great sacrifice on his incarnation in a human body and thus made possible a new spiritual spiritualization. Through his death on Golgatha, he united himself with the earth. And since then, it is always, it's always accessible on earth for human beings. It was to serve the renewal of the mysteries and to fructify culture out of the spirit. 
a year later, the first good, the first world war began. Following a 10 year building period, the Goetheanu was completely destroyed by arson during the night of New Year Eve 1922 to 23. Rudolf Steiner spoke of its of it having died away or passed away as thou a being had left the earth. Yeah, one can say much more about this moment and um, yeah, but um, I um, I will go further in, in the topic which um, yeah, I want to bring. In 1913, not only is a foundation stone for a building placed into the ground, but an image of the human soul is lowered into the earth and thereby sheeted. It is as thou laid into the grave. The very clear formulations on the backdrop of the foundation stone meditation of 1923 make one take notice for the letter begins with the call human soul turning to the destiny of the building it is destroyed in 1922 to 3 the physical foundation stone remains intact and also serves as the foundation stone <clears throat> for the second building but the body, the image of the soul is taken by the fire. But now an aversion takes place from the cosmos or as Rudolf Steiner formulates it in the 20, 1923 address for the laying of the foundation stone, he hears and there sounds the foundation stone birth out of the cosmic world. And it's from there that he receives it, so to speak. The perspective is now not the point on the earth which Rudolf Steiner designated with his walking cane in 1913, but is rather know thyself, renewed out of the present, which in connection with the being of the all prevailing human and cosmic love, Father, with the rhythmic, with the cosmic rhythms, Son, and the weaving cosmic cosmic thoughts, Spirit, comes toward the toward the human being from the far reaches of the surrounding cosmos. It is the summons of summons to erect a new building, the building of the human being. Here resounds that which in the foundation stone meditation on 1923 is expressed as a call to the human being to practice, to give to oneself this sheath out of the realm of the hierarchies by developing, by developing true life, true feeling, and true thinking. In the address of 1923, Rudolf Steiner says, quotation, when in this moment we unit these three forces, those of the heights, of the circumference and of the depth in a forming, configuring substance, then in our soul comprehension, we can place the human dodecahedron in juxtaposition with the cosmic dodecahedron. And from these, three forces from the spirit of the heights from the from the encircling christ force from the work of the father 
the creative activity of the father that streams from the depth we wish at this moment to form in our souls, the dodecahedral foundation stone that we place into the ground of our souls so that it be there as a strong sign in the strengthening foundations of our soul existence and that in the future working of the anthroposophical society we can stand upon this firm foundation stone. Thank you.